Hey, we're back with another episode of Before You Buy, that show where we give you some straight up gameplay and our first impressions of the latest games releasing. As usual, it's me, Jake Baldino, and today we're talking about Pacific Drive. Sorry, I know uh, reviews dropped yesterday. I'm, I'm a little slow, okay? Uh, but I want to talk about this one. This is from Ironwood Studios, a new smaller developer, a team of around like 20 people. And since this game was revealed during, I believe, a, a PlayStation presentation a few years back, I think a lot of people have been keeping their eye on it as, uh, you know, that cool first-person sci-fi car game. Well, ladies and gents, Pacific Drive is a lot more than that. This is a really cool, challenging, and unique game with a solid amount of depth, a surprising amount, really, uh, that I think is going to really blow some people away. I think it might piss some of you off, actually, but the people it clicks with, I think it might really click with. I've been playing a review copy, and this footage is captured on PC, but uh, the game is also available on PS5. And this footage captured here is spoiler free. Most of what you're seeing is like the opening hours and mostly the first zone, so you could be surprised with a lot of stuff. Uh, the main gist, uh, this takes place in the 90s where you get sucked into a sort of scientific anomaly zone, walled off by the government. It's a big Northwest forest region. It's remote and filled with scientific mysteries and everything is kind of fractured. Everything is always changing and morphing and warping and matter, the state of it, is just a mess. There's actually a lot more cool science to it that like, I am absolutely not qualified to explain, but basically this is an unstable region and you're thrust into it uh, with like, only a few science-minded individuals over a radio helping you out and you've got this beat up old station wagon vehicle that can withstand and some of the fluxing nature of the environment. So Pacific Drive is a single player adventure. There's a story you follow and main goals to progress through. You're outfitting your vehicle to resist the elements and gather resources. Then you're plotting your trip on a map that is divided up by a bunch of environments. Each is pretty big and each has their own unique challenges and weather events and weird anomalies and surprises. A lot of it random. Now, uh, you typically have to journey through a few of them, uh, separated by some loading screens to either get to a story mission or cross through a zone to a harder area, or just seek out a more challenging area to find some better loot. Now, to get out of a zone, you typically need to find and collect anchors. These glowing radioactive balls that are an important resource, but also what you need uh, to open a way out, a portal home collect one or a few to trigger a massive beam of light in the sky that you need to race to to teleport back to the safety of your garage. This is an often intense and visually thrilling chase as you're dodging anomalies and also like a storm is closing in behind you so you have a limited time. It's kind of like a battle royale circle getting smaller and smaller on you and you can see it in your rear view and it's hot on your heels and you're crashing through trees and bushes just just trying to get to that beam to get home safely with your loot. And that's really the main loop here. You're in these zones, you're driving around, you're navigating around objects, dealing with the rain, the dark, the fog, or worse. And you're often stopping and hopping out and checking out some mystery or in an abandoned house, digging around for some loot. Uh, looting in this game feels a bit awkward. Stuff is usually only in a select few places and you'll always kind of find the exact type of thing that you need in the same type of building or container. It's not the most thrilling, but what I do like is that every piece of loot, every component really matters. This is thanks to a really intricate crafting system, like really intricate. It's all about improving your car to better battle the elements and get through more zones because you're going to run into gas, your battery can drain, a tire can go flat, you can crash and lose a door panel. All of that needs to be repaired. And also you need to craft tools to be able to fix them out in the field on the fly. Also, you want to craft to just get better stuff. So instead of like a crappy door made out of duct tape, metal, and cardboard, you want a steel door that's lined with lead or reinforced armor, or maybe off-road tires instead of bald old spare tires. And uh, also, the main thing is that the world is constantly trying to ruin your life. Like, anomalies, these things out there are really fickle, 
interesting enemies. Sometimes it's just like a wisp of wind or a weird cloud. Uh, sometimes it's a mannequin in the middle of the road. Sometimes it's a boulder that rises up out of the ground to block your path or, you know, some other pain in the ass, like a little spaceship that can grab your car and fling it. Also, uh, other environmental stuff like radiation, you gotta worry about too. There's a lot and uh, it's completely unpredictable. You are able to develop things and scan things to map out and kind of understand what you might face, but a lot of it still tends to be random. You could be driving along a road doing okay when suddenly like a giant saw blade cuts across the road and smashes your car, or like an electricity pole transformer can appear out of nowhere right in front of you and just completely derail your plans. It happens near constantly and always at the most inconvenient time and it can be absolutely brutal especially in the earlier points of the game when you know i lacked a lot of the tools to handle certain problems i found the game almost brutally challenging painful like limping my car to the finish line because the game derailed me so many times in a row in so many weird dickish ways it's enough to drive you crazy drive you mad and yet Somehow, I found myself hooked. It's all a really good loop of survival game tedium, but then like wrapped up in car mechanic simulator and the brutality of the world and the satisfaction of getting by by the skin of your teeth. Like it is dangerously close to giving you more to worry about and stress about and get your ass kicked by and not enough actual fun but I think it's just enough. Some people are just going to be too put off by this car that is extremely awkward and annoying to drive as the world constantly tries to kill you and your slow ass weird car. But if you can push through, you get some interesting little background story threads and every run really feels like its own unique adventure with new surprises and new desperate struggles. You know, you're always freaking out and you always make it through, like I said, by the skin of your teeth. And to come back still standing with some extra goodies and uh, getting deeper into the map feels good. And not only are you crafting to get better tools and a cooler car, you're also grinding to unlock research and equipment stuff for back at your garage, like unlocking the ability to craft extra fuel tanks to strap on your car or engine upgrades or scientific things to like mount on the roof to fend off attackers. Also, you can then improve your character with health upgrades and carrying capacities. Also, also, there's a lot to this game. Uh, like there's stuff to upgrade your garage itself, like more storage, a paint station, faster fueling, a shit ton more. There's a lot. And I often found myself forgetting about certain things because there's so much here and the menus are kind of obtuse sometimes. I found myself struggling, you know, here and there until I finally stupidly realized I could unlock something that would make my life a little bit easier. And once you finally figure something out or get past the learning curves and the difficulty jumps the game will throw at you, it can feel great. Still, it is a constant uphill battle. Now, one thing I really didn't like, and you're gonna either love it or hate it, is the quirk system. Your car is basically haunted. It's just such a huge piece of crap that it, it, it develops quirks over time. So suddenly your passenger door won't stay closed or every time you turn right, your headlight flickers or you know maybe when you put your car in drive, uh, your wipers automatically turn on. Some of it is cute and funny, you know, like every time I shut my trunk, my horn honks for some reason. Other stuff is just debilitating and annoying, like a battery draining rapidly and you can't figure out the source. It's like owning a gold car in real life. I actually get this. The system with dealing with it though, I'm not a fan of. You can diagnose and fix these quirks, but only in a four word puzzle computer system where uh, you have to accurately input the right words to exactly describe your problems. And maybe I'm just not smart, but I don't know, I majored in English before I dropped out and, and this stuff was really challenging. I was banging my head against the wall trying to fix a quirk with my car, trying to give the game the right word input and it just kept saying no. I was genuinely stuck a lot of the time, especially because the system limits you to a certain amount of guesses, which is really a pain in the ass. Again, maybe I'm not smart enough for it, I'll admit it. I wish there was a bit more to this one, this system, because while it's a good idea on paper, the execution was just a 
big annoyance on top of a pile of other intentional annoyances I was okay with putting up with. This one was like one step too far. But again, like I said, the game is intentionally annoying. So you might love it, you might hate it. Still, progression and upgrading can feel great though, especially because the deeper you get into the game, you can kind of plan ahead a little bit more if you have the right scientific equipment and you can kind of tailor your car to suit the moment a little more. You know, there's always gonna be surprises. There's always a random element. You're always gonna get your ass kicked. But if you know you're going in and you need a little bit of like extra lights or off-road tires or whatever, uh, it can make that 5% difference for success. And that's where the fun is. And again, all of it is in a really gorgeous, slightly abstract Half-Life Twin Peaks-esque world in the Pacific Northwest with some really great music, some license tracks, uh, presentation, and good voice acting. I was interested in the mysteries of this world and like getting to know the people on the other side of the radio that were trying to help me. That doesn't always land with me in certain games, but in Pacific Drive, it mostly does. You could try to beeline the main quest, but I needed to scavenge a lot. So you could probably get 20 hours out of this game easily if you struggle like me, maybe even more. There are just a lot of cool surprises here. Uh, car customization and just good chaotic moments, like butchy clenching moments. I hope people check it out. I'm glad there was a demo available on PC a few weeks back. You know, that stuff is good. We need more of that. This game is a more in-depth survival game than I was expecting, but the deeper you get into it, the more it offers. It's flawed and it can really frustrate you, almost to the point of turning some people off completely, but I found a lot of the vibes and those sweaty, panic-inducing moments really rewarding. I think this is an incredibly unique game. I know I complained a lot, but it is special. It's different. There's so much to talk about with it here. Not enough time for this video. If you're looking for something different, long story short, consider it. I say that pretty strongly. But of course, that's a before you buy. You know how this goes by now. I give you some pros, some cons, and some personal opinion, and now I wanna hear yours down in the comments. Do you have an old beat up car with weird quirks? Let us know those quirks. Do you have experience with Pacific Drive yet? It's launching soon. Definitely let us know what you think. I'd, I'd love to hear. Of course, you can always find me on Twitter and Instagram and YouTube at Jake Baldino if you have any more questions or anything like that. But thank you very much for watching. Clicking the like button helps us, but that's it. Have a great one. See you guys next time. Sure that gateway would. Hmm. Did I not mention that you're the first human I've sent through that thing? I mean, they've been rodents, but it's not like it's completely untested. But anyway, it worked.